Hi everyone, it's Elliot from TutorialEdge.net and in this tutorial I'm going to show you exactly how you can get started writing your own Vue.js 2 applications. I'm going to show you exactly what it takes to set up your own application using the Vue CLI and then we're going to move on to building and running your application locally. Now the full text version of this tutorial can be found on my website and I'll be leaving a link to this tutorial in the description below. Now this is the first tutorial in a series that I'm hoping to do for Vue.js. Now if you have any comments or anything you'd like me to discuss in future videos then please let me know in the comments section below. So first of all I'm going to show you how to create a really simple one page Vue application and this can be done in less than 30 lines of code. Now once we've got this down and we've got some of the basics, we're then going to move on to scaffolding a more complex version of our application using the Vue CLI. Now come into the text editor of your choice. Now for the duration of this tutorial series, I'm going to be using Visual Studio Code just because it lends itself very well to web development in general and I'm a huge fan of using it. So within your editor, create a new index.html file and flesh this out with a simple HTML file with a HTML tag, head tag, a couple of meta tags, and a body. Now within the body, we are going to want to import the Vue.js library. And we can do that by typing script source https unpackage.com slash view like so. Next thing we're going to want to do is create a really simple Vue.js application that will just display a message on the screen. Nothing too fancy. So in order to do that, we want to do div and we want to give this an ID of app like so. Within this, we want to display our message and we're going to define this in just a moment. Below where you've imported your Vue.js library, create a new script tag. And within this, we are going to want to create a new instance of view. So new view. We're going to want to bind it to the element that has an ID of app, which we've defined up here. And we're going to want to give it some data. And this is going to return a message, which will just simply be hello and world. And if we save that and then come into our terminal, if we navigate into our simple folder, and then we can serve this by going live server. Now, live server is exactly what it sounds like. It's a server that automatically refreshes any changes you make to any static files within the directory and serves them on localhost port 8080. Now you can obtain this by doing npm install dash g and live dash server like so. Now that we've got this live server running, navigate to your browser and navigate to localhost port 8080. And you should see the words hello world print within the browser. So that's us created a really nice and simple one page view application. Now, whilst this might not be the most powerful application, it does show you that you can get up and running with Vue.js in less than 30 lines of code. So this nice and simple example highlights one of the main things that I like about Vue.js and the fact that it's so lightweight and you can get up and running importing Vue.js into pre-existing applications with minimal fuss. This is hugely advantageous when compared to the likes of Angular, which requires Webpack configurations and transpiling from TypeScript down to normal JavaScript. Now, should you wish to create more fully functional web applications, there is certainly that alternative, and you can easily scaffold them using the Vue CLI, much like you would with the Angular CLI if you're coming from an Angular background. Let's dive it back into the editor and take a look at how you can do that now. So first of all, let's kill our pre-existing live server, and then navigate back into a new directory called Tutorial 1. Before I forget, in order to get started with the CLI, you'll first need to install it using the npm install g view CLI command. Once this is successfully run, you should be able to run view and it should return something like the following. Now within this, I'm going to want to create a new view application. And I can do that by calling view 
init and webpack, like so. Now, let me just make this a little bit bigger. This is going to ask me a series of questions that will determine how my view application is built and structured. So the first question is, yes, I want to build it in the current directory. And then I'm going to call this just a really simple starter project. Call this starter project. I'm going to leave the description blank. I'm going to leave the author as myself. And I'm going to want to choose the runtime and the compiler. Now on top of this, I'm going to want to use the view router and we're going to be covering this in more detail in a future tutorial. And finally, I'm going to want ESLint to lint my code. And I'm going to want to use the standard ESLint preset. Finally, I don't want to set up unit tests and I don't want to set up end to end tests. And finally, yes, I want to use yarn. As you can see within the left hand column of my editor, this has created a series of files that represent our Vue.js application, as well as the webpack config needed to create and serve our application. Now I'm going to leave this to resolve the packages and I'm going to come right back. Coming back to my application now that that's finished, I can now start up my application by calling yarn run dev. Now this will kick off a webpack development server on localhost port 8080, much like our live server did, but this will compile everything within our source directory into a Vue.js application that we can then modify and expand further down the line. So again, open up your localhost 8080 and hit the refresh button and you should see welcome to your Vue.js application. Excellent. So we've managed to successfully scaffold a new Vue.js application and run it using Webpack. Now coming back into our editor, let's make a couple of changes and see if they're reflected within the browser. So within the tutorial one directory, navigate into source and then components, and then open up the hello world.view file like so. Now within this, I'm gonna to want to delete all of these essential links. And I'm going to simply want to print out h1 and the message which is defined within here. As you can see in here, this is successfully recompiled. And if we browse back to our browser, then you should see that my changes have been reflected and we've lost all of the links that were here previously. Now, that's all we're going to cover within this tutorial. So far, we've been able to create two distinct Vue.js applications, the first of which lived within a single HTML page, and the second of which we scaffolded using the Vue CLI. Now, in the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you exactly what Vue.js components are and how we can use them within our existing Vue.js application. Now, as always, if you found this tutorial useful, then please let me know in the comments section below. Hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more Vue.js content. Cheers.